Welcome to 160 Studios. I'm Holly Scott. I have the pleasure of having with me today the man, the myth, the legend, Tom Salimi from Device Talks. Thanks for joining, Tom. Oh, it's great to be here, Holly. Thanks for having me. Great to see you last week at Device Talks Boston. Oh, it was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we jump into that, that event, which had so many in, in important takeaways. Uh, can you share a little bit about device talks and, and, and you know, just give, give, give our audience a, a little context here on, on the show and why this event was, was so important? Sure. No, so Device Talks itself, the, the larger entity, you, uh, consisted of three meetings when I joined in 2019. And uh, we really, over the, the 2020, 2021 period, we reshaped the format to really focus on four or five principal areas in medical device development. So innovation and investment, they're all the important ones, engineering, manufacturing, getting products to market. We really kind of want to cover the business of medical devices, the making of medical devices. Mm -hmm. A lot of great conferences focus on investments and, and exits and things like that. And those are important, uh, but we really wanted to have something that, again, focused more on how devices get made. And I've learned a lot about that since joining the company. I, I did a lot of those other conferences prior to joining this one. Mm -hmm. And I've been really amazed at all the great folks I've met, the contract manufacturers, the design shops, the regulatory advisors who really put their heart and soul into getting medical devices uh, into in, into the hands of physicians and, and to be able to help patients. So Device Talks, the entity, that's our mission is to kind of bring that community together. Mm -hmm. We were able to, over the, the 2020, 2021 period, when we weren't able to meet in person, uh, we launched our podcast series. So we have our Device Talks podcast network, which now consists of Device Talks Weekly, Medtronic Talks, Striker Talks, Intuitive Talks, Boston Scientific Talks, we launched a couple of months ago, we're rolling out Abbott Talks in uh, in June, and we're in conversations with others. And I just, I want to just kind of say th those uh, entities are kind enough to make their executives available for our interviews. But those podcasts don't happen with a lot of those uh, smaller devices. They, they sponsor each episode, the manufacturers mm -hmm. and others. They make those episode, those uh, podcasts possible. So through our in-person meetings, through our podcasts, and through our Device Talks Tuesdays virtual sessions, uh, which happen every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we really, uh, I think, have built a nice ecosystem for folks to exchange ideas and to to plug into what it what it takes to make a great medical device. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a, a really unique um, characteristic, I believe, of your entity as we've watched it evolve over the last few years. Is it's it, it does keep those fundamentals, the fundamentals of innovation, engineering, bringing products to market, the challenges associated with it. it, it it's always been a consistent voice in that, and it's become amplified over the last few years as your following has grown, and and you and Chris have done such a great job. On, uh, on on making this a more accessible podcast and discussions, and then having you know the bellwethers of the industry be be willing to share time with you and talk about what they're doing as the you know the big strategics out there. That's it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, no, it's been a, the, the putting together Device Talks Boston and and, uh, and our other Device Talks meetings. We started restarted last year, really kind of approaching it from a crowdsourcing sort of way. We've invited all the big strategics who like they contribute their folks to our podcast. When we started doing in-person events, we said, hey, why don't we continue this relationship? Send us your best ideas, your best people. Ha have them speak to what your successes are. Uh, we've engaged MedTech Innovator, who's been a great partner. You know, I, I don't want to recreate what they do. Like, come and use our stage and, and bring your energy and your enthusiasm and your ne network to our device talks meetings. And that's worked out really well. So we really have tried to make these uh, these meetings a, a gathering of sorts, kind of a, a, a potluck, a conference potluck. You bring this, you bring that, I have the house, and let's let's all get together and have a good time. And it, and it worked out great last week. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's why we share a kinship, because we feel the same way about, you know, elevating the industry, elevating the innovation, putting the patients first, you know, really driving forward. And when you do it with people that you genuinely like, it makes it that much more fun. So, you know. With that, it's a perfect segue into the fun we had last week, right? Two packed days. Um, I go to a lot of conferences, you know, as you know, it's part of part of the, the, the decades I've been in the industry. And this one, as I started to see the, the content shape, I, I, I intentionally didn't over schedule my days. So I was able to catch a great majority, not all, but a great majority of the discussions and and the content and it was yeah it was it was it was excellent it was excellent 
Um, so I, I'd love to offer it. I know you are, you know, the host that doesn't get to eat, right? Running around and, you <laughs> That's know. That's exactly right. Yeah, you know, taking care of everyone else. But were there any uh, moments that you caught that you thought, wow, that was that was really interesting? Are there some things that, that uh, you felt were pretty strong coming away from the meeting? Yeah, no, it's, and that's a great analogy. I do feel that the, exactly like you, you have a party and like you didn't get to talk to anybody. You're just running around making sure everyone was having a good time. Um, but uh, I was on a, on a broader kind of holistic sense. I was just really um, so happy to see people out in the hallways, uh, uh, having a good time networking. The the It was a great setup at the convention center where all the rooms were grouped together. The hallway was right there. Uh, so you really couldn't miss anyone if you wanted to. And it was just great seeing all those exchanges going. A lot of people sitting by the windows, uh, got laptops open, exchanging ideas. I would peek my head in each of the rooms and most of them were, were, were full, which was great. Uh, and that's always something that you worry about. You don't wanna you know throw a party and no one comes. There are plenty of people there. Uh, so on a broader conference sense, uh, I really enjoyed those experiences. Uh, the expo floor I thought was was buzzing as well, and that was a good sign. Uh, personally, uh, I moderated probably eight or nine different sessions, and the keynotes are always a lot of fun. When you have a room full of people and you've got great folks like Mike Mahoney and Tom Poland up on stage, uh, willing to share. I mean, you know, we can talk a bit more about it, but we, we go over questions and things you want to talk about, obviously. But I go off script. I just can't help it. And I ask questions that they don't anticipate. And they they were kind enough to indulge me and I think offered some genuine insights on how they approached challenges in their career or, or challenges at, at work. Um, Mike Mahoney's story about taking the job at Boston Scientific and how he uh, how he had every all the evidence pointed to is not taking the job. But then he just kind of stared at himself in the mirror and said, Come Monday morning, if you don't take this job, how are you going to feel? And we all we have all done that. So mm -hmm. it was great to have a moment like that where someone who you admire and who has you know, really helped a company find its way uh, looks at life at the same human level that you do. And of course, and of course they do. But it's nice to hear. Oh, it, it, it really is. I thought the keynotes were it were, were, were fascinating. And, and to me, you know, of course, lover of, of smaller companies, I tend to stick close to the innovation to see these three and it was Tom Poland, it was Mike Mahoney, and then I, I bring in Robert Cohen because he was on the uh, mm -hmm. the robotics digital OR panel. I got a sense for him. I thought it was really interesting because they are um, very different phenotypes, very strong mm -hmm. leaders in their own right, and, and, and so incredibly interesting. Each of them I walked away thinking, wow, I'd love to work with them for, uh, you know, for some period of time because the lessons are just so vast there. Um, the, the Tom Poland one really stuck with me because, of course, they're a, you know, they're a multi-billion dollar successful manufacturing machine, manufacturing production ops. You know, not many companies do it as well as BD and, and at a global scale. And, you know, his, his discussion on the pandemic and the response there was mm -hmm. just truly remarkable. And to catch people in those moments where they can make decisions on being part of this historical moment and jumping in and not thinking about what they're going to get paid and not thinking about what they're what's in it for them just pulling together the troops and, and pushing forward that was really inspirational the one thing though that i think really stuck with me is someone who loves career to hear how over 125 years and what nine ceos they've all been homegrown that's amazing isn't it i i, mean, I, that... I was stat i was blown away i was blown away that's incredible and he's saying he's already got a successor in mind for himself. Like he's already, he's just started a few years ago and he's working on a succession plan. Yes. Uh, what a great business. I didn't want to ask Mike Mahoney if he was working on a succession plan. I didn't think. <laughs> we might get a different answer. We might get a different answer. <laughs> I'm sure he has one in mind. But uh, yeah, I, I, the, Tom Fallon was great in that. And, and yeah, the, you're right. The story about how they, they, uh, manage the 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 the, uh, the the pandemic and he he called the executive who was uh, living in france and said you look you got to move to san diego we got to get this this project done quickly and he did and 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 then ultimately he, he was retired he was like you know what i've done my bit yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I answered the call but i'm going back to france <laughs> high five i'm out yeah, yeah, exactly. close the curtains <laughs> mic drop close the curtains exactly exactly <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, it was, Tom Poland was, was great. And I, I will say, you know, I've been on, I've been fortunate to be on just about all the major strategics campuses at one point. That Franklin oh, Lakes is gorgeous. 
It is, is it really? gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And Joe and I joke, they had the best chocolate chip cookies you could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> it's going back 20 years. Who knows if they still have them? They might have, you know, diet ones now. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> after I see all the major league ballparks, that'll be my next. I did, I did, yeah. I did force my son to take a detour through to, to reach Warsaw, Indiana, so I could take a picture in front of the sign. There that's you the go. That's the capital of the world. But I haven't seen all the campuses, so that's on my list. Yeah, that should be next for you, Tom. It's, it's really, it's really interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, but the, the styles are are so different, and you know Mike Mahoney, of course, you know such such accomplishments. And 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 look, Boston Psy overall um, brings me to to one of the other highlights. So Megan Scanlon did a a unique, a really unique discussion. She well, I would have went if she was talking about anything because I'm just a huge Megan fan. I she's she's a, a remarkable speaker, leader, and just no, she's just great. She's just um, for so many reasons. Uh, the 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 panel was on disrupting um, essentially standard of care, right? And and she heads up urology, uh, as as most of our audience know. And um, I walked away with so many interesting little nuggets that I wouldn't have thought of as you're thinking of commercializing a new device, right? This is a a, a space. This is the LithoView product that that they recently have have made a big splash with, and and her concentration on that upfront clinical value and ensuring that the right stakeholders had the right story early was such a critical part of that because mm -hmm. a few of the audience members had questions on well what about the you know what about the downstream marketing effort and I'm I'm kind of you know paraphrasing here but it, it, her her response was no you know you, you don't worry about that you you really have to focus on on defining that that clinical story and making sure that it's tight and it benefits the patient the payer and, uh, and the clinician, of course, and time and efficiency. So it was, it was really interesting because at a high level, I thought, oh, disrupting a market, you know, not sure how this one will be. It ended up being one that I was like, wow, that was, that was a great conversation with really good speakers. That's great. No, she did. She was at Device Talks Boston last year too, and, and I unfortunately missed that one as well. But a colleague of mine said, you know, she got a standing ovation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, in, a, in, a, in a breakout room. So uh, we we all just talked about it, and uh, definitely wanted to put her in, the, in a larger room uh, with with her, her whole panel. It wasn't just her, um, but but she's fantastic. And that was one of the ones there. Two or three weeks prior before the conference, that was one of the ones like I was trying to realize I'm like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to see that one. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not gonna be able to see that one and that one and that one. All these panels you put together uh -huh. and you never get to you never get to see what happens. So we do we do have them recorded. I'm gonna start listening to them and hopefully we can get them out to people in, in some variety. Oh, that would be great. That would be great because yeah. she was going at the same time as uh, Martin Bueller at J and J mm -hmm. on the robotics. I mean, he's obviously a rock star in robotics. He he's done, you know, everything from Disney to autonomous vehicles to you know surgical robots and and I I knew that I knew Joe was going to be able to attend that so I was we were trying to you know pinch it a little bit and and um, he I, I am sure that there are some really interesting nuggets but the feedback I heard was excellent from his delivery yep. and, and the content he shared absolutely and we had initially. I had tried to leave that slot open so folks, could, everyone could go up to see Martin Bueller because he was booked first, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, this was the only time that worked to get uh, Megan in there. So fortunately, mm -hmm. that sounds like every, both rooms were, were jam packed. So that's a that's a good problem. That's yeah, it was it was definitely good. It was well attended and 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 excellent presentations. Yeah, what what else uh, stuck with you? Anything else come, did you walk away with? Well, I mean, I'm getting a lot of uh, messages from folks who, as we've talked about previously in podcasts, who have been hit by the layoffs. And I thought your opening panel uh, with uh, with uh, Paul Grand and uh, and uh, the folks from Viant and Chris Newmarker led that. I thought that was really really resonated with a lot of folks. So thank you for. Uh, I thought you set a great tone for the for the conference. Not only is this about technology and, and strategies, but also about the people who are in the room. So uh, that that one. I was able to sit through most of it, and, and I really thought that went well. So thank you for doing that. Oh, that was my pleasure. Yeah, Paul and um, Ashish were great. Ashish. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ashish stepped in, as we know. Um, we had a, <laughs> an incident the day before with, with one of the, the other panelists who, who, who got hurt, and Ashish heard, you know, within hours that he was going to be on panel, and he was great. He was great. Paul's always great. You know, he yeah. heads up the, the MedTech Innovator uh, business and has for I don't know 10 11 years I think they've they've been they've been in and and um, talking about engineers entrepreneurs and exits it was interesting to have the three perspectives and kind of tie it into how it can impact the individual so yeah I really enjoyed it I'm glad that you you got some good feedback from it 
Absolutely no. I think, and I, again, I, it was a great way to start, and I really I did enjoy ending the uh, ending the show with uh, the live uh, podcast recording with with Joe and Chris and Peter Stebbins. Uh, you're always kind of you you want to end big, but you're you're kind of sometimes reluctant to get like a big name for the final slot because people have planes to catch and they would sure they'd love to stay and listen, but and you feel bad if someone's taking time out of the day and you can't deliver them a crowd. So this was kind of a perfect go between there were more people in there than i actually expected uh probably i don't know 30 or 40 i didn't get to count but it was fun it was a fun way to end and sort of wrap up and uh and that's definitely something uh, both both the opening panel and the, and the closing podcast recording or something i'd like to repeat oh that's great yeah no you know what i liked about the the, the close is the discussion tied in so much meat that was going on live at the at the show. So, in the in, in during those two days, not only did you have the exceptional panelists and speaking going from the large strategics and 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 Megans and some others, um, we also had the gosh the pop up VC panel, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. You had investors that oh it was so good it was powerful, good. Uh, and every 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 startup entrepreneur CEO you know was scrambling and, and and jotting down notes because there were some real real solid tips in there about how to think about financing and how to think about um, a, a, approaching a potential investor and and what's most important and what turns them off right away you know the little things that are. You don't think about, it, especially when you're doing it over and over and over and over again. Remember, these CEOs, these these CEOs are pitching more than you and I are going to the grocery store, right? They are they're <laughs> pitching all the time, and they're so by the time you pitch a hundred uh, uh, to the hundredth investor, you don't know. Sometimes you don't know who the investor is, what their specialty is, what they target. You know, so it was a real. Um, I thought it was a sage. Um, really resetting of of what we're doing, where we're at in, as a market. Um, Alan May was great. He was just like, look, you know, been there before, you know, we're going to get through this, um, but you got to buckle down, you know, really just a, a tough love kind of approach. And it, it was good. It was a very good panel. So with with those those pieces and coupled with the strategics and mm -hmm. panels like um, the digital OR panel, which talked a little bit more about the forward thinking nature of, of, of the OR and data and digital and that impact, the close really wrapped it up nicely. It really talked about where we can go and uh, in, in a collaborative and holistic, uh, holistic way. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. It, it did that well. Joe, Joe came prepared and, and he offered, always offers some, some great uh, mental things to chew on mm -hmm. and he sees things that I don't see so I appreciated that I'm glad to hear the pop-up VC panel went well that wasn't like a kitschy title like oh let's call it this that was literally Paul Grant saying hey I have all these great investors coming like do you have any sp stage time for a VC panel and that room honestly until a week and a half before was going to be empty I didn't want to I didn't want to run another afternoon session because I'm like well let's, we've got we've got Stryker and BED those are great like that's solid so Paul's like, well, let's, can we do a panel? I'm like, yeah, sure. And we just called it the pop-up VC panel. And then I heard Alan May was coming. I'm like, wow, yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. And we had SV Life Sciences and um, D Dave Uffer uh, led it. And I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the other two panelists, but I'm so happy that came together. And, and I and I do, uh, as I mentioned, I started my career covering VCs and doing investor sort of conferences. So I've I think everyone has a soft spot for the for the startups and for the the new companies coming up. Uh, so it was nice to be able to provide them some guidance and some help because you're right, they are raising money all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's great to have insights on on the best way to get it done. Yeah, it, it provided it, it was it was real just strong takeaways. You know, I mean, we know each other well enough to know that I, I don't like to do anything if there's not a takeaway. You know, g give them some actionable they can work with and move away and do something. And and that panel. Came prepared and and shared some some good insight. Yeah, so it was it was great. Um, you should be really happy with the turnout. And I, w I was yeah, we had over a thousand. So we uh, the top last year is by a lot, um, and we're going to keep growing. And and a, a few other highlights. I was happy that uh, both Abbott and ZimV brought patience to the conversations. Uh, I think that's a perspective that we hadn't. I know it's a perspective we hadn't had before, and I think it's an essential one. And I think to the point of opening your panel talking about jobs, I think 
bringing more patient perspectives really kind of grounds the metal device conversation a bit. So very happy that they had that. Um, Medtronic, uh, Tim Lasky gave a 40-minute presentation on nitinol, which he, even he was like, wow, I never get to talk about nitinol for this long. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was great. And I missed that, but uh, he had apparently had a lot of videos and cool cool videos that, that really made the presentation fly. So that was great. There was, there was, I, I, we honestly try to make something for everyone. And I hope that was uh, in this meeting. I, I feel like a lot of people walked out with, with uh, good feelings and uh, even just trying to pack up at the end or people lingering, wanting to talk, which was great. Uh, but we literally had to be out of there by a certain time. I'm like, I'd love to talk, but I got to pack up the sign behind <laughs> me. Like we, we got to go. So um, it was totally gratifying. Uh, and on Friday, like I said, on Friday, I was both wired and exhausted like i didn't know whether to take a nap or uh, go for go for a bike ride or a run i was just like all over the place so it was a it was a it was a highlight it was a special experience so thanks to everyone who did come out and yeah and thanks to you and your team and and definitely for sure chris newmarker and and danielle kirch and sean willie and all the guys at mass device you know jim hammerman and all of them there you just got a really solid high quality team that that goes above and beyond and and uh, yeah, of course we were uh, sorry Kaylee couldn't make it, but we'll see yep, her next Kaylee. time. Yep, yep, Absolutely. we'll see her yep. next time for sure. So what's next, Tom? What's what's what do we got to look forward to? Oh uh, well, I've already started uh, sending emails out for uh, Device Talks Boston 2024. <laughs> I'd love to secure some keynotes now, uh, and I'm really focusing on uh, Device Talks West, which is happening on October 18th and 19th. That's at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Uh, we'll use the same sort of framework. I'll reach out to Strategics. We did this last year. Uh, but I'd like to work more closely with our robotic. Uh, we, our company owns that owns Device Talks also owns a, a very uh, cool robotics B2B business. And they had the Robotics Expo and the Healthcare Robotics Engineering Forum. And the head of that and I would like to work together to, we hope to create uh, surgical robotics, digital surgery sort of crack there that can really dive a little deeper into the space. So uh, Device Talks West is the uh, the immediate, the, the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And that's again, October 18th and 19th, but we'll be rolling out the podcast. We'll keep the podcast coming. We'll resume Device Talks Tuesdays uh, in a couple of weeks. We took the month of May off. And uh, Kate, with Kayleen Brown around, she's our managing editor. Uh, she's a pro and we're gonna find new and creative ways to. Uh, to connect folks uh, in a digital fashion. So stay tuned, keep an eye on device talks. We're gonna uh, keep going up and up and up. Looking forward to it, looking forward to it. And thank you, Tom, for spending some time with me this morning. I'm so glad we got to hang out last week and then and get together today to discuss. Absolutely, my, and my pleasure. And thanks to the, the Mullings Group and, and, and for, for having me down a couple of weeks ago to record those videos. Those created a lot of buzz and uh, I look forward to uh, to work with you again on, on future events. You guys are uh, real allies on this, so I appreciate the help. Likewise, likewise, it's a true partnership. It takes It takes a village, we're all in it together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you audience for joining us today. Uh, here from 160 Studios, I'm Holly Scott. We appreciate it.